Gilles Thibault. You got it. Perfect. Gilles Thibault. Folks, this is, uh, I'm not sure if he's the butcher or the Sundance of Apple football uh, pre Alpharetta, but uh, this is Mr. Gilles Thibault, one half of the dynamic duo of uh, Thibault and Wells, who oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. are the, the, um, one of you is a Hall of Famer. One of you should be a Hall of Famer. Hint, hint, Mr. Herson. Um, these folks have been keeping the flame of Apple football alive when there was nary a footballer to be seen at the official uh, Lancaster tournaments. Of course, that has changed since uh, since uh, the move to Georgia. But Mr. Tebow, thank you so much. It's been uh, about eight years since you showed up on Sunday, I think it was, in the August 2013 tournament at the Hall of Fame. You're in Pittsburgh. You got the, the bird banner flying there. And uh, welcome. You've been a busy man, replay yeah, thanks. thanks for having me on here, Jeff. I, I do remember we met uh, back in one of the Lancaster conventions. 2012. That was yeah. the, first, the first time I lost to Greg Wells. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, you, know, we, uh, you, you played him there and uh, that's when we already we started playing at that point um actually right before that i there's a gentleman art carter if you know the yes name of carter absolutely um because um, i just met i i've been to every convention since 2005 and then art carter one year i actually give him the credit he brought it out one time late and uh, he was playing the 58 Rams Brown, which is that famous great teams of the past. You get whenever you bought the G Tough set. And uh, it was real late on a Friday night. It might have been about midnight in that room at the uh, America's Best Inn. And he started playing some guy. And it was, he said, and I had never seen Apple football at that point. He's like, this is a really good game if you get a close game. And uh, from there, it started our Carter, and I he, he actually uh, was kind of showed me the game. I'd never bought it. Um, it was a funny story. When I was a, like about 19 years old, Frank and I were playing. We play mostly all baseball, and uh, we would get those brochures you would get every winter or summer. And I think football was a summer marathon. I, I forget what, what one they did the football marathon. We were so broke. We didn't have two nickels rubbed together. Like we couldn't pay attention. We were like uh, catting or something. Like, oh man, wouldn't this football game be awesome to get? We would talk about getting the football game. <laughs> we never got it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Greg and I, yeah, we started uh, playing every Sunday morning at the convention. And up until that point, it was all baseball. And then we started playing. Uh, he started showing me the game. We started. We would play like a half. I think one couple times we played a whole game there. But it was during the finals of the baseball tournament. We kind of felt bad because after a couple of years, a lot of guys were like, "Oh my God, there's the football game!" They would be like so excited to see the football game being played. There was actually like a couple of times like more guys watching our game in the finals of the baseball, <laughs> which no. you know, better go watch the final. That's what we're here for. <laughs> but, uh, it, it was a fun greg's a great greg's a great friend of mine he's like a bro older brother that i never had to me and uh he showed me a lot he's introduced me to the community and uh i credit that guy a lot for you know, everything he's done for the sport and everything i mean he's the last connection kind of oh not the last but i mean possibly the closest in terms of at least the football terms to howard alscog and the journal yeah. back in the 80s when it was rescued yeah, he always talks about when we play our face to face games. He talks about a Howard and tell me like things, stories of Howard, what he would say about like different about the game and everything, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, and it's actually kind of surreal. Every time I play him face to face, I remember him, he wrote for the Apple Journal like, years ago. He was a football editor. And uh, you know, when you get those Apple Journals, you read them and reread them and you, know, you read them over and over again. You go, this is such awesome stuff. And um, I remember reading his articles about the uh, DOS game. Remember the old football game? And he would talk about the whole thing. And then I, re I would reread that article. Then now I'm like friends with him, you know? So it's, like, it's yeah. like surreal. Like I was reading about you when I was 18. I'm 50 years old now. So it's like I've known you for like 32 years. So. Yeah. It's like these kids who are rookies still you know, playing with Tom Brady, you know? It's like, what? <laughs> Yeah. I'm in the same field with, you know, yeah. And I actually, I think Bob Tassinari, who bought the journal in 2012, yeah. 2013, is uh, you, you can still get uh, the complete collection on disc. You and Greg were kind of the uh, flag bearers for the game. You can see there are um, 
there's Viral watching you and Greg play. Right. There's a Don Provisero's watching you. I think Rod McLeod. I mean, a bunch of folks are just like, hmm, what is what is this mystical yeah, what's thing going on here? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you not playing baseball? <laughs> yeah, it was all baseball at that point. And you figure at that and, and Sunday mornings, every almost everybody's eliminated except like two guys, two or four guys yeah. out of like fifty. So hey, what are a couple of games? What's going on here? So yeah, it's such a fun game too to watch. You know, to even visually speak, because like baseball, like if, if the two guys have score sheets, you don't really know what's going on. But if we have that, that field out, you could see that guy moving that ball down the field. <laughs> like, is he going to get in there or not? For sure, for sure. So let's talk about, I guess, let's start with the replays. You've been doing a lot of replaying, and you're all over this, the, the eras of football too, right? Kind of. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um. Well, first of all, mostly I'm a baseball guy. I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a, baseball is like my number one sport. So I'm actually in the middle of doing like a massive lifelong baseball where I'm replaying a steroid era. However, you know, it, football season comes around. You know, Labor Day hits. You get you see the Sunday night football on. You hear that Sunday night football music. And you hear the Jim Nance on Sunday. You, you start getting that football. So every kind of fall, I start thinking of like, hey, let me get some football going here. And, um. Probably, I've never done any like full official replay. So probably about five, four, four years ago or so, I'd say three, four years ago, um, I bought this 76 set and I was thinking of something manageable. So I didn't want to interfere too much with baseball. But just looking at one division, um, we had four teams. You had the Browns, the Steelers, look at the AP Central. You had the Browns, Steelers, uh, Oilers, and Bengals. Bengals. Yeah, Bengals. And you look at the schedule, very, um, there was like two games, you know, one against each opponent. So that was like, uh, that was six games there. Yeah. And you had five, like uh, five divisions. I think it was 11 game season back then. It might be wrong. 14, 14. 14 game season. So was, yeah, you, you play six in your division and then it was those really cockamamie scheduling. It was all over the place. You'd play anybody. It wasn't, it's not, it's not as a symmetric as it is today where you've got, yeah. your, so. Yes, yeah, so it was like six games, and then uh, you played uh, so seven against the rest. Is that right? The sixth division and the seven outside your division. It, yeah, it was at least that. Yeah, yeah. But that was it was completely random. I mean, I'll, I'll just uh, while you're talking here. Yeah. But in any case, yeah, in '76, I believe uh, Greg Wells. That's one of his big uh, seasons. Yeah. '76, Pat, Sam, Bam, Cunningham, etc. <laughs> yeah, and he actually replayed that himself when he was. Uh, he talks about that a lot. Where he replayed that. I think he was in high school. And he replayed that, and um, and go look at that replay. I'm like, I want to get a replay done. But I looked at it. If you played one division, it's AFC Central. That's only 44 games very doable i mean 44 games you really get them and you have a whole division replay because i like to see the standings you know, some guys like to do replays where they'll play like one game a week of the whole nfl and then at the very end they'll, they'll have a standing but they won't have any like uh full season stat comparisons where i like to see that full season of stats to see how appa um re, how appa handled like that season you know like as far as statistics wise and as I figure, well, so if I do this, I'm not playing, playing the whole league, but I am getting a full division. I am going to have, uh, I could um, look at the final playoffs. I can like adjust the record based on how uh, my replays, my replay games went, which I what I did. So I ended up doing the whole AFC Central and uh, we replayed that. And uh, I actually ended up doing the playoffs as well. So it was a lot of fun. And the results were? Oh, and the results so uh, it was really good. Now the Steelers, obviously, um, just to tell you, like the fun of Apple football, like the very first game I rolled the like, season is that Oakland um, Steelers game. So the Raiders Steelers. At this point, you know, the Mackley conception is already four years before that. Yeah. And a uh, reception, I should. Say. I don't know if I said conception, <laughs> reception. It's all the same. The birth of a dynasty. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, the Steelers Raiders was like, that was at that point. Um, brutal. Yeah. Stabler. And I was only probably a young. I was, I was less than 10 years old at the time. And, uh, but I remember Stabler being such a villain in Pittsburgh. You probably know Jeff too. Oh, yeah. that, that era. So, I mean, he, Stabler would just like, be, you know, it was just such a war with those two teams. 
And uh, when I did the game on uh, with APA, and I, I played these all with a basic game using the defensive play calling cards, which I found really, really nice. I really enjoyed the basic manual. <laughs> and um, so the final, just going to the final um, five minutes of the game, I'll give you even like the roll sequence. It was really crazy. And actually the results almost ended up exactly uh, what happened with the, the real thing. So. I'm looking at the score right here. So we'll see what the number is. We'll read it out. <laughs> so what was the actual, what was the actual score of the game? Oh, the, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the Sunday, December, uh, September 12th, 4 PM game. Yep. Uh, the Steelers were at Oakland and uh -huh. fell 31 to 28. So they lost. That was at Oakland. Yeah. So, uh, the Oakland Raiders beat them 31 to 28. Yeah. Apple football. Uh, well, let me give you the final. Uh, I'll give you the rundown here, just to give you the the sequence here. It's pretty amazing. And and it was an incredible fourth quarter in real life. Yeah. Uh, well, let's even set this up even more, Jeff. So the Steelers' odd defense. You can know that at that point the '76 defense was incredible, but their odd offense was only 33. So you could see that it was all Franco and Rocky Rocky Blatt, you know. Um, Raiders were 42 offense, 36 defense. So in the last five minutes of the game, um, Stabler rolls a 66-1 on a short pass to Casper for a mm. touch. <laughs> That's um, I think they took the lead with that. So yeah, so at that point it's 23-17 Raiders. This is all within the last five minutes of the game. Lynn Swan medium pass. 66 2 on Terry Bradshaw's card. Mm. Touchdown. 24 23 Steelers on the road now. Wow. Ex Drillo hits, drills the extra point. Kenny the Snake Stabler going down the field at home. The Raiders fans going insane. 66 1 touchdown. Medium pass for Dave Casper. Oh, Casper again, man. Casper again. <laughs> And so the final, I think this is where Apple is incredible. And I'm amazed every time I look at final scores. Like if you go by the, if you use like actual lineups, which I did on this replay, oh, yeah. Yeah. like every game I, I looked at pro football reference and I figure out who were the starters. And I yeah. um, just talk about the, the, the folks that like me say, oh, there's too many cards like with these sets. But during a football season, guys get hurt. Yeah. For a long period of time and got other guys come in and there's like a whole set of personnel sometimes from like week one to week 10. You know, so. Oh, that, that, I mean, you know, and they, you know, if you lose a five point defensive, uh, you know, linebacker an end, whatever, and you've got yeah. a sub a two or a three in there, that can make that difference. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And on the defensive cards, you do have a difference, you know, because you have that point on the defensive play calling cards, you'll see like that point difference. But the final score ended up being 29-24 Oakland in the Apple replay. So what was the real one? It was 31-28 uh, Oakland. And the Steelers took a, let's see, they took a, Steelers had a 14-7 lead going into the fourth quarter. And from that point, you had Steeler touchdown, Raider touchdown, Steeler touchdown, Raider touchdown, Raider touchdown, Raider field goal. So you had uh, uh, what one, two, three, four, five touchdowns and a field goal in that fourth quarter. There's a weird. I'm telling you, folks. It's there's like a. It's there's something baked in, as they say, to those cards and the era. You know, <laughs> it's it it's not just what you see, but it's in there somewhere. <laughs> it's like magic, Jeff. Isn't it like it's like magic? It's like sight. It's like sight's magic. <laughs> That's it. That's it. It's, it's some kind of a <laughs> sports possession kind of a thing going on. You know? And if uh, any area you play, like if, if I pull out the 2020 set, I'll, like, same thing will happen most yeah. of the time. It'll be like, wow, how is this score so ag compared to like actual? It's crazy. Um, look at that fourth quarter. I think my fourth quarter was almost like nearly identical to the actual fourth quarter. It was like because the Raiders – Scored 23, Steelers scored 14. What was the actual? That's, the Raiders scored 24 and the Steelers 14. That's crazy. That's and I was I mean, I is there a missed extra. Oh, and, and you know what? I had a missed extra point there. That last the last uh <laughs> touchdown uh, the Raiders got, they missed the extra point. So, so anyways, at that replay, um 
I was rolling really bad with the Bradshaw. I, I could not roll with Terry Bradshaw. Ken Anderson, I he was I could not stop rolling well for him. So Ken Anderson, you know, that's 70s. He he has card after card after card after card. He just lights it up. Okay. And uh so the Bengals ended up, they swept the uh records of the, the division. So they went six and zero oh in the AFC Central. Really? In my replay. So when I when they go six and oh, those other teams have to outright beat them in record to right. win the division. Yes. So they, they would they won every tiebreaker. So like there was uh Bengals will win every single tiebreaker. So you had to actually beat the Bengals and uh to get that. Now and originally the uh Bengals and Steelers tied at 10-4, and the Bengals did not even make the playoffs because right. at the time you only had that one wild card, and that would be the 11 3 Patriots, and that was pretty much all she wrote. Yep. Yep. And that's uh that's it was a lot of fun. I mean, I, I, I just played the NFC or just the AFC and the playoffs were incredible. Uh, Bengals, I think they lost. Um, uh, one thing too, one other thing I did with the Patriots and Mark Zarby even pointed this out, the, uh, the, the cards were needed corrected. I think after the, there was all the offensive line, the defensive line was off. Do you remember that with the, with the new set? Yes, I heard. It was like uh, the Patriots had to get improved because they they're I don't know if it was like their offense or defense wasn't right. So you're like, this team, this is an incredible, this is a team was really good. And they need to be better than this. But but I, I did the adjustments that Czar was aptly even put out. I didn't put that in there. Yeah, the Pats scored 376 points that season and ended up uh let's see, losing to the 13 and 1 Raiders by three points in the divisional. Yeah, okay. It was a heck of one of the greatest seasons, 76 and 78, I'd say too. But 76 was amazing. Those Colts, right? Everything. Rams, the Rams beat the Cowboys 14 to 12 in the divisional. Then the Vikes yeah. beat the Rams. And then and it's just amazing, you know, that the those those six powerhouses of the 70s all represented there. And the red, well, uh, yeah, the Colts and the Patriots were kind of up and coming at that time. Uh, Colts kind of resurging, the Patriots. Yeah. Yeah. Burt Jones was incredible in that, in that replay. And, uh, you know, it's amazing. Uh, so I'm going to give you the, the playoff rundown. So, like, I think they all tied in division. I think I have it on Delphi right now. Hmm. But, I, like I said, the Bengals owned every tiebreaker. So even if they finish tied with them, they're going to they're gonna win the division. Right, right. So, uh, so you got through the Colts end up beating the Bengals, you know, in the playoffs. Mm. I got the classic matchup of the – Burt Jones versus Ken Stabler in the AFC Championship game, it did not disappoint. You know, I had um, yeah. sometimes you get those roles in athletic. Like you're playing, you play so many games over your lifetime. It's amazing. Sometimes you have certain roles in play sequences that just get burned into your memory, and yes. you, you'll never forget them. And in that championship game, I remember um, the Colts were down, and they were. Um, they had a third down and long, and it was like, it was a busted up pass play. So it was like a play result 26 27. And I'm thinking, uh, Burt Jones, he doesn't have a lot of wheels. I mean, he's not known for it. He probably could scramble, but he's not like known for that. And nah, not for sure. he rolled a good number, I think, on his outside run, like a five or two, something where he got like a 16 yard scamper. I'm like, wow, Burt Jones has saved the cold season. <laughs> nice. There you and, go. <laughs> and they went down and they banned in a touchdown for the lead and they end up beating the Raiders in the AFC Championship game. And wow. Was, that game, if you guys are a fan of 70s football, play that AFC Championship game. You had Burt Jones, Ken Stabler. And it's like such an amazing matchup. It's, it's, <laughs> nice. Did you do the Super Bowl then? I, I didn't do the Super Bowl. Actually, I just I ended it right there. I was like, hey, I, I'll do the end. Maybe I'll do the NFC someday. But. I wanted to get a replay under my belt, and that's what I did. It took me; it didn't take me that long. It took me like six months to do. Okay. You want to uh, guess? You. I took like a little break from the baseball for like six months just to bang it out, and it was a great time. It was just a really just happened. I I wanted to get something up under my belt. I had done so many baseball replays. Sure. I wanted to get some football. I just wanted to get like a notch in my belt, basically. That I did a football replay. That, that is there is there is that kind of I've got to get this done. Yeah. yeah. 
You want to guess what Burt Jones's longest run from scrimmage was in 76? 20 yards. 17. 17 yards. <laughs> there we go with that play game. Like, how, did, how did they bang it out? Like, it just, uh, the game does that. It's like total magic sometimes. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, even in the role, like sometimes you get down in those roles, like if you're just playing by yourself and like it's late in the game, yeah. you get like a, like a third down and you're like maybe in a four down situation. You got that one play call. You're like, what can I call like this? The whole game is on the line right here. And then you got that dice roll like, oh, they saved the game. And then you extended the game. So it's not over. And just the same thing you feel like you're watching your favorite team on Sunday. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think well, it's just popular. That well, if, if you check out the video I, I posted, um, I think I just did it on Facebook. I got to post it. No, I think I did. On, yeah, I did it on YouTube as well. That's uh, Raiders Cowboys series I played. And with five plays to go, game seven, you know, tiebreaker. You know, World Series esque uh, kind of series there, and the, the Cowboys pull out this trick long pass. State Stallback had been sacked, uh, yeah. on a third and twenty or something, and then Pearson the Golden Richards and a oh, Calvin yeah, Hill yeah, touchdown. Yeah, yeah. So like, oh my god, and it's just like bang, bang, bang. I replayed the Ice Bowl, uh, oh, yeah. sixty seven. Yeah, and uh, last play of the game, uh, Meredith hits a bullet bob for a touchdown on a sixty six one. So the score is 34-27, which is the score of the 66 uh, uh, NFL championship down in Texas. So it's like, man, I mean, the, the, the uh, symmetry yeah, is yeah. weird. So now moving on. So you've done, you and Greg have done a couple of replays. Yeah. Yeah. We start last year, you know, it was such a weird year with all the um, tournament getting canceled, the convention got canceled. Um, we started playing some in, baseball on zoom that's when i remember everybody started talking about zoom this zoom that everybody's working on zoom doing this on zoom the so greg gets a hold of me and he's like you know let's let's play some uh games on zoom and uh we start playing baseball hockey and then a football like why don't we do something a little more structured on football one of the um the only set i had with the old game was 1980 mm -hmm. and i had one set of boards that was given to me by the schultz brothers uh they darren schultz actually belonged to his dad I, I, I know you have the picture. I sent it to you. Um, yeah. He turns cool. the old board down to a, a little booklet. So Pretty sad. I, hey, since there's nothing going on, there was like, it was like a shared shelter in place. It was like everybody had to like stay in your house, you know, and right. Greg's like, we're playing face-to-face -face football. We're, we don't care about this stuff. So um, we started playing Zoom and we decided to play the 1980 playoffs. And uh, how we did, we played the old game, which was really simple. I mean, if, yeah. you don't, if you're used to the new game, all the bells and whistles, it's very simplistic. And uh, we got the, I mean, what, the four plays? The Although I will say that there, and I'm going to do a video here because still to this day, mm -hmm. even after us being away for like five, six years, there's still, I don't get the, the evolution. It's like there are master rules in that old game. Yeah. Yeah. The ground play, the blitz. Right. You know, there yeah, are. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, we did those. We did that because you have that ground uh, play defense where if you guess the you the guess play. the line and if you guess the guy too, yeah. get down. I think it's down four, down six or something. Yeah, yeah, four, four for the yeah. You 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 would be down four and and if you key the guy, it's down six. But if you miss the play, then it's it's like plus ten yards. Or I forget what it yeah. is, but it's it's like a there's a pretty good penalty for it. So. Yeah, and it was uh, it's really fun. It's a different index system, obviously, which was yeah. uh, which was fun. And the penalties were we even used a pass interception table. Yes, uh, it's different than the locator. It was like it's like the predecessor to the locators. Exactly, which yeah. came out it came out in seventy two with a seventy two set. They only did it for the D, the DBs, and in seventy three, somebody had the idea to use it for the reception allocation, and they'd have that separate piece of paper. And I loved it. So I've heard at least one person, I don't know if it's accurate. I thought it was dead accurate. I was yeah. a godsend. Oh, yeah. We had fun. When we were playing our games, we were like going through that table. Like, who got this interception? We go, oh, yeah. this guy got it. And like, do you have any four? Do you have any twos? Yeah. Yeah. Who's in Who's in or not in the game? Yeah. I mean, that's, there are some of those weird, you know, well, it's like, and you go talk back the Raiders for the uh, uh, the reception allocation. It was like an, an A grade 13 parentheses one hyphen three so branch casper and chester would be like uh one would be a 13 one a 13 two a 13 three so you've got a lot of you know <laughs> yeah oh yeah 
to try a lot to keep. of variance on there i'm just looking through it and also like the the columns like you know you some and you could see how the new master game came about where they just go like the one and four two and three yes because i we were always like uh well did you roll your column decider first like remember you had to roll one two three four five six to see what column you're under right and right like the, i think it was like the punt returns yeah i yeah exactly you know what i mean like the punt returns that's like you had to roll like uh one dice first to see is it one to three or four to six it used to be uh when it started they had you calculate an a b or c index for the special teams returns which is an absolute nightmare and never yeah. did that. I just said everyone's in a B. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's in a B. And you have to use your imagination through that old game, like the plunge play. You, know, you got to imagine, like, is it inside, you know, off tackle? You, know, you, have, you got the plunge play, and then you have the running play. You know, so, so we would like make up running play, like, oh, okay, he's on the outside. And you, just, you would have to make up your own calls during the game. Right, right. So, how we did it was like, uh, whoever lost the game, the, the playoff game, they get to pick who they wanted to play in the next playoff game. So if there was like a, a good matchup that you wanted and you like to play a certain guy, like, oh, I want, I want to play Dallas. You know, I want to put her here next. So cool, cool. Ended up, we had uh, Minnesota had a little bit of a run on that. Uh, they got to the NFC Championship game. Interesting. I remember how we, so it was a Minnesota, Philadelphia made it to NFC Championship. Hmm. Uh, AFC was uh, Browns and the Chargers. Mm -hmm. Eric Coriel mm -hmm. was like, um, yeah, was just, just getting there, you know, with that 80, you know, see that with the, they had a really good receiver like Jefferson, Winslow. Wes Chandler from the Saints, I think, had joined him by then. I'm yeah, not sure. Chandler. <laughs> um, it was a lot of fun. And then uh, we had Barkowski, we had a good game. Barkowski, I think I mentioned to before the call, um, he had a 450 yard passing game in there and lost. Like as our Barkowski, as I went out, I think I was losing. I was playing Atlanta. I was rolling, for, and I was like, I'm just going medium. I'm going the long pass like crazy because I mean, if you remember on the old board, the long pass wasn't as much of a like a high risk play because you right. could get a little more completions on the long pass. It was kind of there were some medium esque results in yeah. there, yeah. Yeah, it was like medium almost. It was like medium almost. And uh, but you see, so you could like call long meet or long pass and not get burnt like you would in a new game, so right? Yeah, exactly. And long pass a new game, hard to complete anything. You're looking at the 80 results, the actual 80 results, and the Vikings won the NFC Central at nine yeah. and seven, and the Falcons had that 12 and four year with the grits blitz, almost yeah. knocked the Cowboys off in the divisional. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm gonna go, I'm looking at my iPad too, Jeff. I want to see uh, how those how we ended up so. Who were the final? Um, who were the final four in real life on that? If the NFC was the the Eagles won, uh, the Eagles, Vikes, and Falcons won their divisions, and the Cowboys at twelve and four tied with the Eagles were the wild card and had to go. Let's see, they. Uh, oh, and the Rams actually were the wild card too at eleven five. Sorry, this is the. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, that was that brings up a fun point here, Jeff, about the, you mentioned the Rams, because uh, that was one of my wins, because I don't beat him a whole lot. Yeah, Greg is, he's a mastermind. I mean, the yeah. guy, A, he's a genius. B, he's a football mastermind, on top of being a genius. So, like, <laughs> the guy is like, uh, I mean, he's even beat Barrett, who is basically oh, yeah. a football god. I mean, he's actually beaten him face to face. Uh, he beat him, he beat him, yeah, I can't, the, when we had our, the, uh, the event up there, he, uh, it was that weird finish with the 99 Rams, I think it was the 84 Niners, I think Greg talks about yeah. in the interview, it's like, yeah, he's, he's got that. You, um, he'll get you, like, you know, he's the one, first one that taught me that little move with the audible, mm. where, like, uh, if you have your pro set defense out, and uh, he can, he's going to audible into a free line. And he's caught me on that a bunch of times. Whoa! And I, so I can't even go into nickel now. I'm like, nope. <laughs> like you, 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 I am audible into the three wide. So, so now he's getting like the two line jump. He's getting the. <laughs> he's going to the A receiver. My only hope I have is to key his receiver or like double cover the receiver. So. All right. I'm like, wow, you got me right where you want me on that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. It's it's just like, you know, it's setting people up yeah. uh, with your play calling to to kind of hold that one little ace in the hole when it's it's critical and someone's kind of, you know, sensed a pattern in you and you break that pattern or you, you know, 
however you uh, do your uh, magic toward the uh, the wire there down the wire. So there's a lot of. Uh, so to that that Ram story, so he, he had beaten me. Like so, when we played our the first game we played, uh, he crushed me thirty nine seven. It was the Oilers Raiders. So he had the Oilers. So he, oh yeah. Earl Campbell was just he ran all over ran all over me. All my I couldn't do anything. So the next game, uh, it was the NFC Wild Cards with Rams Cowboys, mm -hmm. and I wanted the Rams. I always liked the Rams since the seventy nine Super Bowl. I was like, you know, the fast thing with them, Ferragamo, the Steelers, and all that. Although it should have been the Buccaneers, should have been Doug Williams' first one that year. But yeah, yeah, you're <laughs> right. And Ferragamo is amazing. He left it actually um, to Montreal Alouettes the year yeah. after that, which yeah. was amazing. So I actually went to their. Uh, spring training you know they they have for the alouettes and like oh fair. it was a big deal because my parents are or my dad's from montreal so we would visit there a lot so uh there's a, a player on the rams Gerald thomas mm. and he, he had one of those monster cars you see you know like with the six yards per carry and um so i saw that and i'm like i'm gonna he beat my butt last game i'm gonna run this Gerald thomas even though it was uh there's a couple of items, Mike Gooman, and there was another guy, uh, Peacock, Elvis Peacock in the Rams. Yeah. Was like their feather key, key guys. And I just ran Gerald Thomas down Greg's throat. And he, he gets on me to this day. He's like, you ruined his career because he like he would point out like, oh, he never played after this 80s super playoff game. <laughs> but uh, Gerald Thomas ended up with like 175 yards rushing, and uh, the Rams beat the Cowboys 45-35. Then uh, he beat me, uh, Charger. He beat me with the Chargers, because uh, I and then I took the Oilers. So the Chargers won their playoff. Right. Um, and then I beat him with the Browns, because Brian Sipe, I think, has a good year that year too, wasn't he? Like, yeah. oh yeah, that was a great year for him. Yeah, yeah. He the the Browns finished. Uh, they uh, won the division. That was the year the Steelers were really the age and injuries really took a toll. The Browns were eleven five. I think Sipe was he a Pro Bowler that yeah. year? Right. Um, I think he was MVP. Wasn't he AP MVP? Oh, it might have been. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, I think so. Looking right here, he uh, let's see, Pro Bowl and um, hmm. yeah, it's my connection's a bit slow, but uh, yeah, one time MVP. Like but, yeah. And then um, so then we had the NFC, then the Vikings. Um, so well, I, I beat him with the Browns only because he had Joe Cribs and he rolled a lot of fumble numbers for Cribs. And it was like he had a ton of fumbles on that bill team. Uh -huh. Then we had the Vikings, Falcons. That was that big 456 yard Barkowski game. Um, but the Vikings actually have uh, Tommy Bills. I or not Tommy Bills. Is it Tommy? Tommy, uh, Tommy Kramer. Tommy Kramer. Touchdown, Tommy. But their backup was like Bills, I think, that year. Wow. And, um, this was kind of fun little things again after football is Greg was uh we were playing starters in the actual starters, mm -hmm. but he said he was actually hoping Kramer would get injured because Bills had a ridiculous card. Like he's a backup quarterback. No. Sure shooting Bills gets hurt in that game. Or not, no, Kramer gets hurt in that game, and then he brings Bills in, and he rolls all these touchdowns under this crazy Bills car. <laughs> Dills, Steve Dills uh, 20, had a 1-0 record. He completed uh, 32 of 51, 62.7%, 352 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. So, yeah, a fairly decent yeah. card that should be. <laughs> oh, yeah, 62% completion is going to get you a pretty good card. He has 65, 62, 66 that range. And then, uh, then we had the Eagles, and he came back and just destroyed me with Ron Jaworski and uh, Gerald Thomas. I couldn't, I didn't have the lucky role like I would draw. I, was, I still kept pounding Gerald Thomas, and he, he was, Greg was too hot with uh, Jaworski to win that one. And then uh, he ended up, he, he, you get Greg with Dan Fouts and his receivers, he's almost unstoppable. I, I was playing the Browns, so he won with the Chargers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, which was kind of interesting during that game we were playing my son plays football he actually plays division three now one of his coaches in high school was was a san diego linebacker in oh, that wow. season uh, jim lazlovic oh wow yeah and i'm a, he's right from uh, our area here so we're playing this car I'm like i know this guy's name and like i showed my son like my first my freaking coach <laughs> there you go <laughs> like nice. coach is in the middle of my appa game right now so that's I cool. never, I, i'd met the guy many times and 
you would never tell that he played freaking like San Diego Chargers. He played in that uh, that Dolphins Chargers game. Oh, eighty one. And uh, he actually had a fumble recovery in a Rapa game and a blocked field goal recovery. So, nice, uh, nice. <laughs> And then, uh, then he beat. Then he, Greg, just got on a hot streak with the Eagles. He he was uh, Jorski, Harold Carmichael had a couple of 200 yard passing games, and then the Eagles end up winning the Super Bowl. So it's all on Delphi forums. I just bumped it on there for anybody who wants to read that. But it was all due to the pandemic. It was like Greg, we would get together every Thursday evening, um, and we would play just a half, and we wouldn't play a whole game in one sitting. And it made it very like manageable, so we weren't like. Because he's married, I'm married, he has kids. Some his kids are older, but he still does other things. But um, it was very manageable. You know, we, we spent maybe, we were cranking them up pretty quick. I mean, we would get our, we would BS like you and I are doing for like a half an hour. And then yeah. we, we would play half like an hour. So like we actually did about an hour of game time and a half. So yeah, actual game time was like two hours maybe for a whole game, but were you keeping well you kept the stats obviously yeah. so i mean were you both keeping your own or just one person um, time keeping? it was really good how we we had a good setup uh defense read the boards okay. um, offense just rolled the dice and called their plays okay. uh greg kept the clock and i kept the stats for every game so it was nice that greg always knew what the time was i always told i always had the stats so i didn't have to keep track of the time uh defense read the boards so we were trying to get uh, – he was trying to get me to stop. I kept wanting to look at the boards when I was on offense. He's like, just don't look. I'll, I'll tell you what it is. It, it, was, uh, it was nice. So it worked out really well. Yeah, that divisional labor always seems to help. and uh, yeah. uh, Or when you've got the two people playing face-to-face and you get the referee kind of managing the uh, right. stats and all that kind of thing, right? So Right. Yeah, exactly. So it was – it was good, and we got that time. Actually, right after that, you know, we didn't stop. We went right to um, 72, mm-hmm. and that's what we're actually right at the very end of right now. And then 72, and the reason I got we wanted to play that was um, we were going to do 81, but I actually had that. Remember, Apple used to sell their sets in those uh, perforated sheets, probably back yes. in the oh, yeah. I had a 72 set I had never touched until the convention I bought it in like 2010 or 11 or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just perforated, took all the car, you know, separate all the car, which is a pain. I'm glad they don't do that anymore. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good job, you know, with the cars and cars. It's so awesome now if you buy them. So let's do 72. So we start automatically at a re- uh, reception game. Greg crushes me, Daryl LaMonica. He didn't, even, he didn't even bench LaMonica. He just kept him in the whole game and crushed me. Uh, then I had I had never heard of Washington Redskins 72. I, didn't, I couldn't tell you a single person except maybe Sonny Jurgensen on 72. This is kind of like before my time. I was only one year old. Yeah, <laughs> sure. But and this is another beauty of that, but it's like you can get these old teams, and I, I love this team. They had that Larry Brown guy. He was like the AP MVP that year, Larry Brown. Yeah, 1,216 yards rushing, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was awesome. He would just – Found it and I ended up beating them like the very next game. I don't know who I beat. I don't know if it was he had Dallas. Who I mean, who they play the first round game in that year? Oh, uh, let's oh, uh, Packers. Packers, Eagles. yeah, yeah. And Greg, we could not, we were dumbfounded how Packers got to the playoffs with that Scott Hunter as quarterback. His <laughs> card is terrible. And they finished 10 4, actually, is uh. Yeah. Had to be Brockington, right? Let's well, see. Yeah, we yeah were Brockington. At, like, yeah. How did this team go to this playoff? And uh, we, so I, I beat him with this watch team. I loved it. Larry Brown just ran all over the Packers. It was a great time. And, um, and he just totally went on a string where he just totally destroyed it. So right now we're at the Super Bowl. And uh, he got a hold of a John Brady card. I always get on him. I say, you are totally game in the system here. George Puccinelli, if you look at John Brady's stats, mm-hmm. he, he would have led the NFL in passing. He's he's unstoppable. I think he had like 20 completions in a row in the league. I mean, he had a ridiculous amount of completions in a row. Mm-hmm. I can't stop this Brody card. So I don't know how good to do. The, the Super Bowl's coming up. It's the Oakland Raiders and the San Francisco 49ers. And Greg has a good point. He said Brody did start the playoff game that year for seven hmm. Reds or for the 49ers. Brody was 37 that year. Steve Spurrier, ex of the Buccaneers, was the yeah. starter for most of the year. Okay. Yeah. 
And I always get on about it. I go, you got to put Spurrier in, man. He's he was a starter for this team. And he's like, oh, no, Brody started their playoffs. <laughs> it's like a total – like I got on him because I did the drill with Thomas in 1980, and he's doing the John Brody on me in like 1972. <laughs> there you go. So all before Zoom, same thing. We've been playing, so we're at the nice. Super Bowl right now. And we're gonna see how that goes. So it's all. Cool. I mean, after football is best enjoyed face to face. Like I played ID Jester a couple weeks ago. Right, right. right. And that was so much fun. You see, get down to that final goal line stand. And I think if you guys know if people haven't watched it, um, he was trying, he, he was like the first, like fourth in goal or third in goal or something. Yeah. And uh, he's at the maybe one or two yard line. And he was trying to go three wide to try to get me. And I said, no, I'm going ground defense and I'm keying the re- runner. He was trying to bait me into like, like to doing like a pass defense. And that's the beauty yeah. about football right there. And then it mm-hmm. turned out, he ended up passing. And then we figured out if he ended up calling, he actually had the audible out of the way. Uh, he was lucky he had his audible left. And I kept trying to like, uh, or like prod him into like calling his audible earlier. I'm like, oh, you really, you know, you have an audible here you could do. He's like, oh no, it's all right. <laughs> but uh, we figured out it would have been down six. So if he would have called that same play to stay where he was, it would have been like down two for the uh, three wide versus the goal line. Mm-hmm. He would have been down two for the key in uh, the running. So it would have been like down six or something like that. It was crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you nailed him good. I just happened to catch that weirdly. Yeah. Talking about that, we was like, oh, <laughs> these guys are actually straight. And I was like, man, oh, man, come on. There were like seven people watching. And uh, yeah. so uh, how did that uh, collaboration come about? Did he invite you? Did you know him previously or? Yeah, I, I worked with him on baseball stuff prior to that. And um, you know, we had talked a lot on YouTube. Yeah, the YouTube community is very similar, like the Delphi community, except yes. it's like very visual and video. Same like Facebook. You have the Facebook community for this stuff. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you have a group of guys that maybe just look at Facebook. You have a group of guys maybe just go on Delphi. And you have a group of guys maybe do YouTube. And you could comment back and forth and everything. So uh, I do all three of them. So I found, I previously just thought Delphi, but I find that Facebook and YouTube very um, great tools to stay in touch with other guys with similar interests. Uh, do you use one cam or multi-cam or focus well, on the guys? For Greg and I, we just do, uh, he has a webcam for his computer. He has like a power. I have a laptop with a uh, webcam on. Yeah. So we weren't even looking at roll. We were just like uh, calling the rolls out. You cool. could like, I mean, right now, like if you were playing somebody, you, you put ball roller up. Like I could, I could just say, well, I'm just gonna use ball roller. Like if you yeah. don't have any questions at all about the rolls, I just you could see my roll here. Yeah, I'll, I'll press the button. Right. You could see it. So it's a good time. Yeah, you know, with the it's just a great way. The zoom and the technology. We just touch on the technology, how like it's evolved for me. Um yeah. I, I can't get away from my baseball projects, but I recently found that pro football helper. And all I right. found that I don't know if you've tried it at all, but it's amazing product. I mean, this Tom Milne guy deserves a serious, I mean, congr- thank you and congratulate you for what he's done. Yeah. Because, I mean, up until now, like, you know, base football replays, like, what are you going to do to keep stats? You're going to yes. hand keep it? Or are you going to, like, I used Excel for a rudimentary Excel program for that 76 replay. But this mill, this program is unbelievable. Like you guys, the standings, the stats, it's just amazing for the community. I haven't tried it yet, but it's it's PC only, if I understand. Yeah, yeah, it's all yeah. PC. It's all PC. Um, I know Greg has uh, Barrett has Excel. Uh, even Greg Wells has an Excel he uses for that stuff. But uh, this this program, just with the logos it puts on there, it puts the field logos on there, and. It even has like uh, you could put the voice announcer on, which I thought it was uh, it was so fun. You have like either a male voice or a female voice, and then he does little color commentary, and he's programmed it into it. Like I played uh, recently um, an '81 Vikings uh, Buccaneers game, and they Buccaneers made the playoffs yeah. in '81 year. It would be like Doug Williams drops back, he finds James Wilder in the flat. Breaks a tackle and like the, the computer's telling you this. It's like they're re- they, you can hear like a voice telling you that. It's it's pretty wild. 
Now that's interesting because you know in Madden they do that, but I think it's a little more generic. So that's interesting that he's he's got actually got it set for the uh, players. Yeah, he got the players on there and everything, so you could. And it's uh you have to put in um you have to put in have to click on the quarterback, you can click on the receiver, click on the. So you already you know what the play is, but once you hit um once you go back to the field. It's going to announce the game for you while you, and I actually I'll pick my next play while the, the lady's reading with the play call is it's kind of like you're watching a TV game on TV. It's like, oh, OK, oh, what happened here? Oh, wow. First down. It'll say like that'll be a first down Buccaneers. I'm like it's really wild. It's just amazing how technology has taken what sites did like 1950 to where we're at now. It's like imagine just sites saw this like right now, 1958 or whatever. <laughs> what was mine oh yeah for sure for sure a football in 2021 using these technology poles yeah just a little you know a little a little assist there for sure yeah it's cards um, and dice still so yeah that's it that's it and, and yeah i mean it's like i say i mean there's a, a the, the number of gamers out there uh, especially on the instagram uh you know pages uh sites whatever you know the the board game uh community i mean there's nashville con or nash cons coming up war games yeah, yeah. coming out your ears and uh, all these you know D, D offshoots i mean that's going back i mean yeah. it's it's amazing advanced squad leader for you war gamers right, I mean, right. that is behemoth <laughs> so yeah it's it's awesome and the, these these uh, uh this ability to kind of speed the process although you don't want to over speed the process i mean one of the things uh the uh, issues with the football game is that it can be uh, a long time. But like you said, if you're dialed in, you can roll it in about an hour. And yeah. It goes by. It feels like it goes by quick. And, right. you know, I think for, for me, the appeal has always been you've got your guys, every card, even if you're not going to use. I mean, do I care that my right guard, you know, you know, Apple football tracks statistics and and the number of blocks that your right guard blocking assignments that your right guard got right during a game is not a right. statistic. So. Right. You know, it's more, you know, app targets those stats and for having yeah. these online stat helpers is great. Yeah. Oh, a huge yeah. part. I mean, with the that Tom Milne program does that complete recap. I'll you read like Mark Zarr's replays. He does like real great, really nice. Uh, yeah, you, know, you have like the Vikings on one side, the Buccaneers on the other side, for, like first downs. And he's, he has like the number on each side. It's like that little box score you see with football. And yeah. it does that. It does that for you, and it's just amazing. I mean, it's just uh, it's totally transformed my football experience. Because now I'm, I sent you pictures of my score sheets I was trying to develop. Because uh, there's ones that Apple gives out. There's not enough room on there to write things. But uh, I yes. got them out of it, away from that graph paper now. And then, um, yeah, it's a very neat handwriting. See, that's a thing too. If you look at mine, <laughs> I've had atrocious handwriting since I was like uh, in third grade, <laughs> anyway. And and when I, you know, I cover sports in my dad's paper when I was like fourteen. Yeah. And you're taking the stats by then, oh, so yeah, you yeah. kind of learn. And I actually knew stenography for about a year or two, and I wish I'd learned that again. You know, you you invent your shorthand, but you know, you, you get a sense of the game, but then, I mean, I still have stats I haven't compiled. And it's like, that's part of the joy of it. You know, that Barkowski 456 yeah. yards. It's like, when you can see that and see what's yeah. coming up, that's a huge boost to your you oh, know, satisfaction. Yeah. The whole experience. I mean, that's part of the experience. If you're into the stats, you know, that's, that's part of the experience. And um, I might like, I just want to do a shout out. Like, the, we're talking about the convention you got to get down there uh if anyone's watching this make an effort if you can to get there because you'll get a chance to meet some of these guys we can talk about like you meet wells you'll meet greg barrett mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just to be able to sit in a room with greg barrett and hear just to kind of like absorb his football knowledge is amazing like just uh just how much he's known and done with that game and then oh, well yeah. just to see how much of a genius this guy is as far when it comes to like play calls and what you want to call and don't want to call right and it's just uh yeah. you know, it's a great treat so if you ever if you're near atlanta it's in august that's your opportunity to get down there and meet these guys in the flesh and they're very approachable you can talk to them they're... totally totally yeah it is kind of yeah. i mean lancaster was my first experience and i brought my trunk full of games and i've got i've posted that photo and uh, we're starting to post all our coverage from there uh, with, with uh, uh, Verrill and John Cochran, Skeet, everybody. I mean, it was a really amazing uh, and dusty Welsh uh, yeah. 
was uh, inducted one of the three, Bill Blair and Kevin Clough, um, Delphi Between the Lines moderator, all got in the Hall of Fame that year. And it's a really strange, if you, you know, it's like, oh my God, you know, it's, it's that coming out of, you know, people are like me and they're that whole thing. And, and you've got, you know, Atlanta's, you've got Savannah nearby and you've got, the, I think the College Football Hall of Fame is in Atlanta as well, yeah, is it not? So yeah. Yeah. A lot going on. And, and as Barrett mentioned, that's now gone from, you know, just the Friday night dinner, the Saturday big oh, yeah. day cop and the Sunday morning to it's kind of gone out through the week, Tuesday, Wednesday. Oh, so yeah, like we'll be on Thursday night. We'll go out to dinner and uh, we'll talk about the football. And actually, I, I was a couple of years ago, I was sitting there at dinner and it was uh, Dunlap, Ray Dunlap, another Apple Football Hall of Famer, yeah. Barrett to my right and Wells to my left. I mean, this is like the holy trinity of Apple football. <laughs> I couldn't believe what I was I was eating dinner here with these three guys. I'm like, right, right. just to hear their stories. And like Dunlap has a ridiculously awesome matchup system. He's yes. Doing. Yes. And, uh, he's very willing to show you how it works. He'll sit down. Like if he, you walk up and he'll just sit down and I'll show you exactly how this works. Yeah. And um, it's a great guy. I mean, this guy's fantastic too. Talk to you and all those guys are really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, yeah. The wealth of knowledge, the personalities, everything it's, it's worth at least one. you got to go at least once. If you've been playing Apple with any kind of a frequency and it's kind of risen and stayed at the top of your gaming list, then yeah. you should do it at least once. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It was a good, good time. Definitely try to get done. So tell me about uh, the G top, the greatest teams of the past. <laughs> For those who don't know, the G-Tops, they're, they're two kind of thing. Well, this yeah. is their G-Tops. They were issued throughout the company's history. Mm -hmm. They were recalculated for the 72 big board revision. Then they've right. been recalculated for the quote-unquote master game. This is the recent yeah. G-Top reissue, like when it came out okay. the last four or five years. Okay, okay. So and then there were the original franchise All-Stars. Mm -hmm. uh, the original uh, came out in 82 the or came out in 83 of the 82 season and the master game so there's a lot of these teams around and you wonder how to kind of use them i mean the g tops are generally issued as you you have it's uh the 69 vikings will have their counterpart in 69 chiefs the 50 yeah. browns rams the 53 lions will have their counterpart the world championship came out yeah yeah that in the 70 i think 72 or three ish region with the uh the 10 teams the five championships yeah oh, sorry just to set that up a bit here so you used well how far did you go down the uh, g-top rabbit hole well we went down i just picked the g-top two set um I'm, gonna, I'm just pulling it up right here um and the the oldest team in that set the 49 eagles mm, yeah. um they had like one like a real good receiver and runner i forget the guy's name but you know, modern teams versus those that 49 team. And one of the interesting thing when you're putting those that 49 Eagles on a table, you had some guys doing both sides of the ball, like offense and defense. Yep. Like, it was that tail <laughs> they don't have enough guys here to play. And, you know, <laughs> this guy has to play offense and the linebacker is like the kicker. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Right. But um they they couldn't keep up with it. It was, it was the great team of the past two, and I threw in the uh 09 Saints, which is a tremendous Drew Brees card. Now, why why did you yeah, just for the just for Breeze or just for this because um, you used them with the IG Jester as well, I think, right? You went well, to 09. Yeah, I used that for them. 2009 is really special just because my son, who's uh he's he's 18, gonna be 19. Um he just started playing football that year. And actually, that's right about when I first bought football. Um, first bought the football game in 2009, right around there. And uh, yeah, football has been a really big part of our family's life because my son's played. He's played um, every year since 09. We have 12 years of football now. So every fall is watching his practices, watching his games, going to every single game. Guy, the kid is. Uh, he was a uh, named a. In Post Gazette, like an all star team when he was a senior, and he's playing Division Three now for Westminster. Awesome. And a uh, big part of our lives, football's been. So that 09 season, you know, when he first started midgets, that was always a real big year for us. So we always like, but that Peterson, Breeze, yeah. uh, it's such a great, that, that team is so explosive, like Marquise Colston. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Reggie Bush is on there, Pierre Thomas. And it's, it's a great 
I, I use that. That's why I, so I threw them into the great teams of the past. And um, it, was, it was a good tournament. So I actually started playing this right after I finished at 76. Mm-hmm. And uh, that ends up only, um, let's see, so it was, a, it was eight teams. So it was like a total of like, uh, what is it, eight. Oh, so it was only like about six, 15, 16 games or something. Yeah, I can go through the scores here. I mean, the first game, like, uh, it, was a, it was a fabulous matchup. You got the team of the 70s versus team of the 60s. It was 66 Packers versus 75 Steelers. Mm-hmm. Steelers won 21-13. Uh, Franco Harris, 141 yards. So that's, yeah. uh, that was a great game. You had Bart Starr. You, know, you had some great names in that. Bart Starr versus Bradshaw. I mean, that's, you can't beat that, man. So they advanced. Then uh, we had the uh, next game. This is uh, 2013 Seahawks versus the 94 49ers. Steve Young. Oh, yeah. Steve Young's car, 94, with that core of um, that receiver, guys. Who was that receiver? It was ridiculous. Uh, Steve Young was uh, 302 yards passing. It was just uh, Russell Wilson had no answer for that. Yeah, no, that's that's uh, that's uh, <laughs> 94 Niners. There was six touchdowns for Young in the Super Bowl. That was a uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. To Steve Young. And at that point, when I, I was playing that set, I'm like, I don't think anybody could beat this 94 49ers team. I, I really felt that way. Like, there, this team, no one's going to beat them. And uh, it was, I think they had a good defense, too. And um, this was a good 98 Vikings, which everybody talks about with Randall Cunningham's good, great season. Uh, 92 Cowboys, everybody talks about the Emmett Smith, Troy Aikman. Yeah. You could hear Pat Summerall, John Madden in your head, you know, the whole game, you know, mm-hmm. talking, calling this one. And uh, that was a close one, 35 31. So that was a uh, Cowboys beat them. So Cowboys beat the Vikings. And then we're keeping going. So then we had the 89 49ers, not much different. I think Montana was on that one. Yeah, Montana was still on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's the 85 Bears, which I always found was hard to win you know, on the tabletop for me. I, I don't know why. It's they got it. Maybe it's because APA may not like emphasize defense as much, but mm. I found it hard to win with that McMahon card. I mean, that McMahon <laughs> card is. It was all about the, I mean, that season, I mean, uh, I mean, you've got, uh, well, who are you going to key? If you got a running, you got the uh, Peyton and Sue, I mean, who are you going to key on runs? Yeah. And your receiver core wasn't super stellar. So you got to kind of. One good guy. He was, he was that one good, re, re, they had one good uh, receiver guy. I think it was, he was an A. I, I kind of forget who that was, but I, actually in that game, uh, Refrigerator Perry had a 60 yard interception return for a touchdown. <laughs> Uh, and he had a one-yard touchdown run at fullback. Oh, he, there you go. He's carded as a fullback here for that big play in the Super Bowl. Now that's interesting too, because that that brings up the whole: Do you, you know, yeah. for the most part, uh, you know, postseason stats weren't included, but limiting that also. I thought you were going to say the limiting were. Oh, there's the guys too. that really they can't stomach a guy like Refrigerator Perry getting a 60-yard inter fumble return. Yeah, <laughs> I, it's like I can stomach it, but. <laughs> uh, I know there's guys that can't. <laughs> right, I your point of view, so <laughs> for sure, for sure. And uh, so that was uh, that. So the actually in that game I was playing, this was uh, the Bears actually beat them. So I was saying that I was having trouble winning with them, but they did beat the 89 49ers 36 30 in that game. Mm-hmm. Well, about 175 yards. Nice. So yeah, two 71 yard touchdown run. Then the 09 Saints beat the 91 Redskins. Uh, 26-24. Uh, that was a Drew Brees, you know, big game there. That was a Mark Rippin. Mark Rippin, yeah. Mark, you know, who they had the Hogs. You know, oh the yeah, Hawks. yeah. The third, uh, the third quarterback that uh, Joe Gibbs won a Super Bowl with, right? That was uh, yeah. 87, 91, and uh, yeah, 82. Weissman, Williams, and uh, Rippin. Right. Yeah, Weissman, Williams, and Rippin. Um, let's see. Then the next one we had the four. This is the forty nine Eagles. They're playing the 72 Dolphins. They, they drew the 72 Dolphins in the first round. And the Dolphins, no problem at all. 34 20. Yeah, you get Zonka, Morris. Just it's a ridiculous. Defense. They just stifle you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a. I mean, that team had to be, that had to be like one of the most played teams, I think, of all that's that history. A, you know, the 72 Dolphins. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, Bill Lilly's doing Nobody it. That's. Was just talking about them. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fun, it's a fun team because you've got. Yeah, with that Mercury Morris in addition 
you know, it's just like, man, you've got weapons all over the place. Oh, how, yeah. It's, how do you stop them? Yeah, and even like uh, the, the par War, Warfield, I think he is a better, oh. better or worse grade than the old 72s, uh, I forget. But when I was looking at this 72 set, it's different than the 72 we played in that this uh, our Zoom games because it's the 72 G Top Dolphins. So actually, the 72 G Top Dolphins obviously a little bit better because it's like normalized for the great teams. The uh, um, Warfield originally in 72 was a short A long B, five points across the board. It was short A long B in 73 as well. Yeah, short A long B in 73. Okay. Then the 72, um, the next game we had, uh, the, we had the 2016 Patriots. That's like Wells' big, big team. He, he, he played, I think, with Barrett. Um, they beat the 9 9 Rams, which was a, a, a ridiculous oh. matchup. You got Kurt Warner, the greatest show, what is the greatest show on turf? Oh yeah. Versus uh Brady at his uh as peak peak of greatness, you know. Yeah. And uh Brady comes out on top 36-33. You imagine how excited these games are when you're oh, playing yeah. these two awesome teams. Yeah. And they come out like that close. Isaac Bruce got an 80-yard touchdown on the last play of the game to cut the lead to three. Oh, uh, so St. Louis. So a uh, touchdown, if you know, is a half a play. Mm -hmm. So there was a half a play left, and St. Louis had to, uh, uh, they had to do the onside kick attempt. Yeah. Uh, but the Patriots recovered that. So it's not right. you know, half a football. Yeah, time runs out. But uh, yeah, that would be a well, there, there was a video series that came out on VHS. Yeah. Uh, that Super Bowl, they kind of brought back the uh, I forget what Packers team they had. They had like the 84 Niners, the 70, I forget, there was a Steelers, Packers, Niners, Cowboys, and they, you know, but they they inter they clipped out all this video of the different uh, uh, games that kind of get them to a Super Bowl, kind of have them play. They brought Cosell back and stuff, but here you can do it at ease, you know, and in Madden, I, as I recall. I haven't fired it up in a while, but uh, you can go and click on the vintage teams, but yeah. uh, they it's like Swan is like number 18 or something. Oh, you right, know? right. Because yeah, so it's a, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, with Apple, you just, you know, here, I'm just going to grab these guys, these guys, these guys. It's right at your fingertips. You know, I'm going to bring these folks back. You know, Lou the Toe Groza and uh, Sammy Baugh and Don Hudson versus you know whoever you know uh, randy moss and uh yeah and ty law you know <laughs> so oh yeah that's amazing I mean, talking about the those old how madden lets you go to those vintage guys even like the mlb the show gives you like the vintage guys too yeah. my son doesn't play any app at all but you know he'll tell me oh, hey my madden game you know bo jackson has a great card i'm like yeah. you tell me bo jackson has a great card, but you don't play apple <laughs> so he knows the that's <laughs> funny how these, these new team the madden and the show that they have the concept of cards which that's what you and i've been doing that's what we're doing yeah, exactly exactly you know there's there's that whole can you get the gen we did this story years yeah. ago and everyone i mean that's the topic of conversation how long will this last well it's clearly lasting i mean i want to do a video a side by side a lot of a lot of videos we got coming up here but um you set up a a video game you got to wait for it to reboot unless you're, you've got your gaming system but the 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 experience is 180 degrees yeah, different yeah it's different yeah it's, it's it's you know it's not i don't trust a statistics based online game a madden or anything because right, it's, it's 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 you're playing a team an algorithm and it's reacting more to your personal playing ability and your physical yeah, ability with right. a controller and and i mean i know they throw in like uh kurt warner speaking of 99 rams they throw right. his sidearm you can whip out or some personal yeah, yeah, yeah but you know so yeah you're right about that it's actually it's, when it depends on my dexterity that's that's when i lost in video games is like when these games got like especially the hockey games right mm. i couldn't i couldn't do the one timer like you had to do a one timer to win the game I could, I just didn't have the hand dexterity to, to do this on NHL 95 to for whatever it was. And just to wrap up that tournament, so the 90 Broncos beat the 77 Cowboys. You know, so we had Elway, the great Elway team. So he had, he had great receivers there. So the Steelers, fine, they won their bag. Now they had to face the 92 Cowboys in the second, the 75 Steelers. 
Ooh. Unfortunately, Troy Aikman and Emmett Smith is too much for Bradshaw and Franco. So, yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's too much. Uh, 35 14 Cowboys. Yeah. Eliminated. Interesting. And yeah, we had the triplets. Yeah. And you had some yeah. big, uh, big cats on that uh, Dallas D. Interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. It's interesting. Next game, uh, Steve Young ended the Bears Cinderella run. 37 uh, 31, he beats the 85 Bears. So you get, they get rid of the. Uh, that's a bit of a shootout. 400 yard passing game for Steve Young, though, in that one. But that's a pretty much of a shootout for the 85 Bears. That's a. Yeah. I don't think oh. they scored. <laughs> oh, you know what? Look, um, McMahon only had 100 yards passing. They got 31 points. It was all on. Um, you know, looking at the, I'm trying to see where uh, Peyton was. Pey Walter Peyton must have had a ridiculous game in that game. Yeah, that or like three or four defensive touchdowns, right? Oh, uh, yeah. It was, uh, <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of, we had 174 yards receiving, which is like your typical 85 Walter like, Peyton game, 175 yards <laughs> rushing. Well, actually, yeah, actually looking at the uh, 85 Bears schedule from week one to week 16, they scored. 28 points, 20 points, 33. They scored 45 against the Skins, 27, 28, uh, 26, 23, 27, 16, 24, 44 points shutout against the Cowboys, 36 points shutout against the Falcons. So wow. they did have some firepower in the end of the season, 37, 17 against the Lions. So not beyond the realm of possibility. It had to have been a turnover rate. I'm not sure. It had to have been like some time they must have had the ball more often than those teams. But uh, 09 Saints. Oh, this was the, one of the best games. Of the, we had uh, Drew Brees versus Brady, 09 Saints, 16 Patriots. Drew Brees came out on top, so he eliminated Tom. So really? Like Tom down, you would think, like, uh, at the end of the game, if you know, Brady's going to do his magic, it just never happened. So, wow. That, that, that uh, Brees, 09 Brees card is way too good. And we're almost getting to the end here, so we're getting to the nitty-gritty. So then the... Elway and the Broncos had no problem at all with the 72 Dolphins. They, they beat them. So 90 Broncos win 34-17. Interesting. Yeah, that's good. And we're getting down to the final four of the 92 Cowboys, 09 Saints, 94 49ers, 98 Broncos. Saints uh, had no problem at all. Drew Brees, another 400-yard game, 432 yards. <laughs> beat, takes out Troy Aikman. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Okay, so the, so the 09 Saints are in the final now. So they ended up in the final. Uh, so then we had the 49 Broncos, uh, or 98 Broncos, 49, 94 49ers, and um, John Elway, Elway Magic. Yeah. Beats them 38-31. Nice. So uh, eight, uh, Rod Smith for the Broncos, eight catches for 224 yards. Oh, oh. And then uh, John Elway throws an 80 yard touchdown pass on an 11 2 roll. Mm. Yeah. With one and a half plays left in the game to come from behind, beat Steve Young in the 49ers. Which wow. Like, that's another one of those moments where you're like hooting and hollering. And you're like, yes. <laughs> that's, you can feel it coming a little bit. You know, it's like, oh man, this is going to actually happen. You can, it, it's weird, isn't it? It's like you can feel the roll. It's like the, these dice are dead, but there's. Yeah. Every once in a while, you feel like this is actually going to happen. You know, it's weird. <laughs> Something's going to happen. So we had a fantastic final. So we had uh, 09 Saints and 90 Broncos. So it's Brees versus Elway in the final <laughs> championship. Wow. Terrell Davis runs off 164 yards. Hmm. And he had a 59-yard uh, touchdown run in the third quarter, which gave the Broncos their first lead. Oh. They had been losing uh, 17 to 7 at one point. Hmm. And uh, Terrell Davis had a third quarter touchdown. They actually went to uh, overtime. The Saints kicker, I'm trying to see who that was, he missed a field goal attempt with uh, like, a, like a one play to go. Oh, that actually was six plays to go. It was tied 24 24. Uh, the Saints kicker, Carney, missed a 40 yard. Go ahead, field goal with six plays left. Ooh. Went to overtime, and Jason Elam hits a field goal. I did sudden death. I okay. Did the old scow, you know, the, what we grew up with, the sudden death overtime. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we well, had yeah, that coin flip was like, hey, you won the coin flip. It's all right. It's all right. Jason Elam wins it for the Broncos. The 98 Broncos win the tournament, the great teams of the past. 
on some crate. It was a, it wasn't like a really good roll. It was like a 40, it was on a 46 five roll. So hmm. if you're rolling for that, that field goal, it was a 45 yard field goal attempt for Jason Elam. Uh-huh. Like this is for the win. So you're shaking your dice, you know, you're yeah. <laughs> That's right. It's like, okay, this is the win. The entire great teams of the past. They, they put all these great teams away. You know, <laughs> 46 5. You're thinking, you roll 46. You're thinking, that's like, oh, I want a good apple roll. No, nah, it's like, what? <laughs> and you look at his card, he had a five there. So obviously, he was really good at that year, Jason. Yeah, yeah. So Broncos beat the Saints, and that was, uh, that was a ball game. So that was a, that was a good time. That was our last completed solo replay. I mean, Couple, uh, we had a crazy John Elway at a there's a bunch of 400 yard passing games at tournament. <laughs> uh, Isaac Bruce had a ridiculous uh 285 yard receiving game. Wow, yeah, so uh, we had some really good stuff on that. Nice 49 of 92 win Elliott for the Cowboys hit a 49 yard field goal that was a high field goal. We had some couple kick returns, defensive returns for touchdowns. Drew Brees wins the tournament MVP. He was uh, three and one. He had an 82% completion percentage. Which is, <laughs> he was 70% in actual though. Yeah. 70% 09. He had 82%. Um, he had a ridiculous uh, pass attempts. It was really close. Completions were. He was just really good. So a lot of fun. I got one, one bad thing about Apple, those old uh, 2009 era where they were perforated sets. Yeah, the, the ink runs off on it, and we always played that breeze card so much. <laughs> talking about the ink runs off, right, right, right. Like, yeah, there was that period, yeah, where you, yeah, I remember. Yeah, it's period. unfortunate, but uh, you could you could buy them new right now, and they're like spectacular. The ink isn't yeah. going to run off if you buy the new set. Now they're back to the, the sans serif type and the sturdier stock, and completely. Uh, for a while, they were doing the perforated without the cr- corners. Then they did the perforations with the round corners, but still the stock was a little less, uh, yeah. you know, than where it is now. So it's right back up to standard, I'd say. Yeah. I just put them in sleeves. You put them in those like yeah. hard sleeves too. They're like perfect. So I got that, that 09 set. I, I look like a classic now. It's like a classic set. <laughs> so, totally. Yeah. That, that's yeah. Uh, yeah. That's it. Well, that's it. You get that magic kind of mine. 78 set is just still the one that's like, oh man, you know, um, yeah. Another reason I bought that set is I it was totally unfounded. There was a lot of debate on the BTL, if you remember from way back then. When that 09 set came out, they're like, oh, there's too many turnovers, there's too many penalties. Right, yeah. And it, none of it was true. I mean, I've done so many games with it. it, it there's nothing wrong with that set. Well, now that brings up the point of sample size and how, yeah. you know, uh, how do you kind of, and the and the formula, the magic recipe in 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 uh, apparetta down there. How you know, it's kind of meant for maybe a one. You know, my minor kind of like a one and done. I'll do a deep cut. Right. I did the seventy four. I, I talk, always talk about this in the uh, Rams Jets. It was like a week five six seven. Namath was not. You know, he was where he was in seventy four, and it ended up being. I think uh, 1913 Rams and it was 2014 Rams in real life. I mean, that the sample wow, size to me is one. One game is what I'm going to probably play, you know. I mean, you could run a simulation with these guys if you want to play 100 straight games of it. But, uh, you know, I, I, in terms of, you know, there's too many penalties, too many of this. I mean, you wonder what the sample size really was when so many right. How many games are you playing there, right? Maybe yeah. you know, one game, that a lot, of, yeah. Two games, yeah, you probably could have two games. A whole season replay, no, you're it's gonna come out. I mean, it's just that the, the if you look at the cards and you look at the penalty numbers on the board, if you have fair dice, it's gonna come up. So. I also think some people roll wrong, but that's just me. There's a completely <laughs> weird thing. Some people are just, just just dice do not like you, and that's the way it is. You're not gonna get real results. <laughs> you do not, it's the tiki god. You have to bow down to that thing, and it will treat your dice exactly as it should be. Right. I mean, I, yeah, I actually, I saw Ken Thomas actually uh, uh, bought a, uh, uh, on, on Facebook, just got a nice mint 67 set. It reminded me of the 68 set I bought because it had the AFL and the NFL. Back then, you bought them separately, and, but uh, you can still get them. I remember I get the set, a box of 68 with the AFL and NFL, and somebody left all those little score sheets in there. And the scores were like 55 to nothing or 55 yeah. to three. It's like, 
how are you playing this game? You know? yeah. <laughs> What's going on here? Because the scores are like really weird. I've right. never had anything like that. Every, every I've never had a skewed, I don't think, like maybe like the 78 Steelers versus 62 Packers. I think the Steelers won 30 to 10. I don't know that yeah. it would have been that lopsided, but yeah, there was, I was talking about that green team in the past. Like some guys are putting comments. I think another guy did a very similar format on Delphi. And uh, his criticism of it, uh, he enjoyed, he, he liked the game that he was at. Uh, too much offense. You know, G Cups, there's, um, it was like, it's, if you looked at my scores too in this project, it was like 30, 30, was, everything was in the 30s. Like, interesting. Hmm. And uh, we're looking at that. I mean, you're dealing with the greatest teams of all time here. That's and it. The cards are the greatest players of all time. So, and as you get into the nineties, I mean, how is, you know, it, you got to go back to, you know, dead ball, if you will use the term for, you know, pre 78. I mean, I mean, I mean, 78 Bradshaw was a God. I mean, he was 318, you know, and Swan and Stallworth were loose and Eric Coriel took off from there and West coast, et cetera, that uh, Walsh was doing in Cincinnati. But, you know, it was that um, by the time you get to the nineties and forget it, it's, you know, yeah. and run and shoot, etc. You know the whole story. So, right. yeah. what? Uh, any? Uh, what's your next? Uh... Once we finish seventy-two Super Bowl, All right. uh, we're thinking about going to eighty-one, and uh, mm -hmm. that's um, that's going to be uh, eighty-one is a, a full slate of games. You know, as you're getting a little more into the modern game, I think multiple wild cards, a lot of a lot of playoff participants in that. The Jets and the Giants both made the playoffs. So that's going to be kind of fun. And just playing around with this uh, pro football helper, it's uh, really changed my whole lap of football experience because, like, you got the stats package. It does that little announcer call. I mean, it's just uh, it's a lot of fun. There's a video. One of my friends up in um, Massachusetts did a great video to walk you through how to get it all set up, Dave Gardner. Mm -hmm. okay. um, there's a link, I think, to his video on how to get a whole season set up. So if you put that YouTube on, you just, like, kind of pause it. Like, he'll tell you how to do it and pause it and do it let him go again and he'll he'll show you how to walk through season that's all i did because I, I initially i couldn't get it. it it takes a little bit of know-how of like uh files and things on your computer and like add like cutting paste things you have to kind of be uh have a little bit of knowledge computer knowledge to get it set up but once you get it set up it's amazing i mean there's he could have charged like 30 40 bucks for this program you know sure, like sure. ball stack you know, if you ever play baseball you're ball stack. Mm -hmm. Sounds like there's a niche there for us, there us five Mac users in this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like, it would be helpful. But yeah, I wonder if you can do it on a Google Chromebook. Maybe I'll try it there and uh, report yeah. back the result. Cool, cool, yeah, awesome. All right, so you're you say you're going to be in Atlanta. So folks, yeah. get your tickets and your hotels now. Barrett's already got his, and he's already in, he's out in Washington State, so there's no excuse. Yeah. Uh, and if you're driving yeah. up 95, stop at south of the border between North and South Carolina, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a, I've been there. <laughs> that's, that's a funny place. That's crazy. It's absolutely, we, uh, yeah, we stayed in the presidential suite one time. I was like a discount rate. Yeah. This huge water bay. They had a great steakhouse and all the, you know, blow it up on your fireworks. So, well, <laughs> the, the next 4th of July or Diwali or New Year's, yeah. et cetera, you know? Yeah. My dad loaded up on cigarettes. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> in the back of a 75 uh, caddy or something like that, cavernous trunk. Yeah. If you got a big car, just to load up, that's what everyone does. They yeah, say the- uh, Yeah, definitely. Because you, you'll meet all these guys and don't be afraid of your first time, you get welcome like family. I mean, as soon as you come in there, they, I mean, right as soon as you walk in the lobby, you, know, you, you got guys talking. You know, we're up at, it's such a fabulous experience. You know. Have you ever had like a belly laugh where you, you laugh so hard you want to cry and your belly hurts? Well, basically, that's how you feel for three days. You know, mm -hmm. it's like just that feeling of euphoria and your friendships. And we stay out. We don't want to stop talking. We, we'll stay up and talk sports and APA till like two in the morning. I mean, and, and later sometimes. And we get up and it's just fabulous. The folks have been playing this game since the 50s. Yeah, yeah. You know, relationships that go back a long time. So, I, and yeah. especially now, go and meet up with these folks because that's yeah. massive part of what Apple is about. Yeah. Plus, you know, it's such a niche hobby. I mean, you and I in our work lives, and we can't talk to the guy next to us in the cube about like uh, Apple. You know, he sees them just 
what are you talking about? Are you playing a kid's game by yourself? You're by yourself, you know, like, <laughs> this is so weird. You're like the weirdest dude I've ever met. Right. Um, but it, when we meet guys like ourselves, like, in, in like, oh my God, there's someone that's like the uh, same interest as me. It's just like nonstop. You want to like hang out with her. So it's such a great time. Definitely worth going. Funny, uh, talk about a story, but I just touched a little bit about football and work. And, uh, I was at work about 10 years ago. And uh, this older guy, he was maybe about 15 years older than me. He was probably about 65 or 60 at the time. And uh, him and I would talk sports a lot. You know, I would work with him. We talk, and just out of the blue, this is totally unexpected. He goes to me, have you ever heard of ATDA? <laughs> like, no joke. <laughs> And uh, I'm like, are you serious? That's uh -huh. like my life, basically. <laughs> Here you go. And, and the lights time. come on. <laughs> and I, I was, uh, he was very, he wasn't into technology at all. He wasn't into like YouTube or forums or, um, and what I found out, and actually I was actually collecting things on eBay at that point. I was buying old football sets and oh, yeah. baseball sets on eBay. And he's like, I really need a Pittsburgh. So I really want to get that 78 set for Bradshaw. Like he yes. said. He said oh, yeah. That's why I think I thought of this story. And um, so I bought it for him on eBay and he actually just gave me cash. I mean, he's really old school. I'm like, I can get you a 78 app a set. And like, yeah. how, how can you get I'll get on eBay? And uh, I remember I gave, gave him the set. He was so appreciative of it. He couldn't believe that he got his hands on a 78 set. He was looking at like flea markets and garage sales and Oh, yeah. stuff like that and uh it, it was amazing the guy does a baseball replay i guess he's widowed or something he's by himself he does like a, a baseball replay every summer and he does a football season every winter so, and every year he would do one whole season of each sport yeah and uh and it, I was, it, it, a good comment i was thinking is like there's guy there's guys in the APA community that don't even know there's an APA community. Exactly. Like, think about it. Like, it's like exponential. If you think of how many people are probably out there playing this stuff, right. that we don't even know about, which is like amazing. So, that's right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, trying to scrape up everyone, you know, I mean, that's, that was the kind of our thing on, on Facebook first to kind of find, and it, and it takes time to tweeze people out. Yeah. You know, I, I try to post on Pro Football Hall of Fame. I, you know, on all the Halls of Fame, it's like, oh, you know, they mentioned Bambi Allworth. I'll post the card up there just to kind of shake the tree yeah. and see if anyone knows or what is this yeah. thing? You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, they don't takes, know. Yeah. Takes time to build, but, uh, but it's a good time. At least, I mean, we have fun with it. And I know the, the guys that are watching this, are, they're probably having fun with it too. If they spend an hour and a half watching us talk, they're in that football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Keep us on in the background. Play your own game. Play yeah. your game. <laughs> oh, yeah. I do that all the time. I listen to all kinds of guys on YouTube while I'm playing games. I listen to their commentary, what they're talking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really We're going to be doing some, uh, and I, you've got to be involved in this. I want to do some uh, roundtables, some forums. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I oh, talked yeah. To, so, I you know, it, yeah, it'll be interesting to, uh, I mean, everyone does it for guitars, this, that, the other thing. So, whoa. <laughs> I almost yeah. So, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. And talking about the community, I'm actually going to be, I'm meeting a friend of mine from college in about an hour cool. um, for lunch. And it's just, we're going to talk about football. And I guess he, he was in town. He lives in Ohio. He just came to Pittsburgh for a couple of days. And he said, let's meet up here. And uh, I, he was a guy I knew in college at Pitt, like back in the 80s, 90s. And, uh, nice. He loves talking for APA because he plays APA too. And really? it, is he on? Go, and we're just going to talk APA football. I know the whole time. The hockey, football. Is he on Facebook? Yeah, he's actually on Facebook. Subscribe. Yeah, <laughs> like, subscribe. If you, know, if you see somebody who likes your stuff, you'll see yeah. him on there. So he's, he's on, definitely on Facebook. He's on Delphi. Good deal. But, uh, you know, we're, we're going to go meet and we're going to, I'm going to have like a rap or something. We're just going to talk. You know, Apple for like an hour so this is like all morning we're talking Apple. <laughs> that's right there you go i did that yeah when i when i yeah i was like uh again 2011 we launched uh i went to, i found out uh who roadboard was on the delphi and turns out he was an awesome guy I, I hung out with him at the convention dave right. yeah. yeah we rolled a game in altamont springs i lived in altamont for years i mean there was so much Apple going on again you never know talk about uh it's like man <laughs> it's like this is weird i'm back with oh, uh yeah. So, That's the thing cool. about the convention is all these guys you see you talk with them on the Delphi forums. A lot of times you can meet them, like mm -hmm. on the board, you know, Dave. He's 
all these they end up being like brothers for you you know you have to go to this, this convention yeah for sure for sure yeah. gino it's been a real pleasure as yeah, always absolutely. thanks so much uh incredible uh experiences and replays there thank you and yeah. uh we will uh speak again for sure here definitely. yeah definitely all right sir all righty have a good afternoon we'll thanks you too take all care right.